All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me a touch on the top prop bets for the Sunday night showdown between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. And so, as always, I like to start out with a game preview courtesy of the Odds Jam Sportsbook View. Uh, this is something that updates in uh, live time. Right now, just looking at the Chiefs versus Green Bay game right now, uh, the Packers are six and a half or six point dogs in this game. I don't know if that's an interesting one. I do still worry about the Packers in prime time, especially a night game. It is about a 43 for the over and under. Looking at the injury report, the Packers are still pretty banged up uh, we know that Aaron Jones is going to be out in this game Wicks could potentially be out uh, Emmanuel Wilson who was a good preseason stud he's going to be out you have Luke Musgrave out Jaden Reed questionable and so I think the expectation right now is that Jaden Reed is going to play if he sits then Wicks would become a pretty good option and vice versa like Wicks has looked really good thus far this season as has Jaden Reed but we still know the top receiver and I say this with a little bit of uh, pause is Christian Watson he just needs to perform like it and then Romeo Dobbs is a good secondary option Tucker Kraft the tight end for the Packers is a player that I really like personally um looking at the Chiefs nothing too crazy I mean McKinnon being out it's really the biggest mover CEH is probably going to get a little bit of work <laughs> but mostly it's going to be Isaiah Pacheco in this game so I go ahead and start out with just showing you guys the best prop that we currently have available for this game uh Patrick Mahomes over rush yards I probably don't want to touch that but we can see the average sportsbook line has said 19.5 underdog has said 19.5 and so this line for, that we're getting for Patrick Mahomes is clearly too low three yards too low um that does make a big difference especially uh at such a low number that's a very big difference and so let's just actually go in and start out with the Chiefs for the props that we are getting right now uh for the Chiefs they are a little bit of a difficult team to figure out simply because they give their snaps they spread them out especially to the pass catchers like Rice and Watson are kind of clearly the top two options but at the same time Last week, we saw MVS get about 60% of the work, as did Sky Moore, and then Noah Gray still playing about 50% of the snaps. So really, it's so difficult to predict them because it's really Travis Kelsey. Pacheco now, with uh, McKinnon out, he's going to get probably about 75% of the snaps. We can predict that. And Rice did kind of seemingly have a breakout game, but he still only played about 67% of the snaps. So good news is that the snaps have been a little bit more concentrated everyone's basically playing 50 percent of the snaps that we would want to be looking at the bad news is that they are still spreading out the production and so when we're going through this list seeing which props are popping up you know i could see why someone would have a little pause again mahomes on uh prize or prize picture, yeah that is too low sure the under slightly being favored at 19.5 but that is basically a push so that's a big edge we see pacheco for under 15.5 for a fantasy score if you were to adjust that for the underdog line that'd be set at 13 clearly uh prize picks is too high compared to the average sportsbook line and in the projection data and so a lot of people are probably seeing this matchup and probably have a little bit of concern with betting the under for pacheco I will say very much a touchdown dependent play is Pacheco. Now, as Packers defense has been a defense that's been looking better recently. And again, if you take away those 12 points via touchdowns last game for Pacheco, he doesn't get the over. And so that is where I, I think I actually would be fine betting on him not scoring a touchdown. That's really the biggest bet there. And if we're looking at it, the anytime TD right now for him is about 105 plus 105. So not exactly favored to get it, but it's also very close. And then from there, the next prop bets that we're seeing, Patrick Mahomes under two touchdowns that one is basically being favored as a push the thing with it is is that he's now expected to get three touchdowns is pretty much what the data is telling us there rice for under 4.5 receptions is also a very interesting one that is an ev bet that we are getting by now you guys probably know more times than not, i'm just going to take the ev bets that we get and looking at it like he's only had the over what three times this season the targets really have never been there for him and that literally could have just been a matchup thing against the Raiders now I think the fantasy community and myself included thinks that that was more of a breakout game rather than a uh, a game in which the Chiefs saw a way to attack the Raiders with Rice rather than another receiver because obviously in the previous slate or the previous game it was actually Justin Watson who they saw had a better matchup and they were just chasing uh, the production to Justin Watson so it is very tough to gauge they've been very vocal about saying we like our receivers because we can use them in different ways depending on the match and so that very well could be the case with Rice last week and so all in all I probably do agree with the data that under 4.5 receptions is the way to go then from there we do see Justin Watson for over 6.5 again that is a decent one that we have on this slate not a 54 percent chance hit, but very close and I'm very, very interested to where the line comes out to be for underdog but we look at Justin Watson only three targets in the last game uh got a touchdown in that game that was kind of nice uh, props wise for me I had him over fantasy score there but really he is their receiver number two 
I mean, obviously, Kelsey's basically the number one. So technically, he's like the receiver number three. All in all, though, if he has another good game in this game and operates as a high target getter, I wouldn't be shocked at all. And so that is where maybe in a game stack I could get there. From there, guys, I don't know if I really want to touch any of the other props that we are currently getting. So let's go ahead and move on into the Packers side of it. Now, I know a lot of people are going to mention, well, Taylor Swift's there. What are your thoughts on Travis Kelsey for over 16.5 for a fantasy score? If you guys want to roll with that, I get it. It's a, it's a fun narrative. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that. So we're going to get into the Packers now. And the Packers are very interesting because in a way, these two teams have been very similar, especially offensively, where the quarterbacks have kind of had to overcome receivers dropping balls, uh, you know, for the Packers is receivers, pass catchers doing the wrong things on certain plays. Uh, so that can be very uh, frustrating when, when you're watching it. Obviously, a lot of people I think are familiar with the Chiefs struggles with the drops and whatnot. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with the Packers struggles where, uh, you know, Jordan Love was getting a lot of slack for stuff that really wasn't his fault. I think anyone watching the games was able to come to that conclusion. Anyone that's been following this channel probably knows that by now. Um, hopefully, at least. I know I got a lot of slack uh, on Thursday night from, I'm assuming, Lions fans that didn't like my pa Packers takes last week. I don't really know. But watching it, the Packers struggles during the middle season are, were very much high school mistakes where on offense they were averaging a mistake or two per series i'm not even joking it was uh you know first down you get a holding call on first down or it's third and short you get a false start just stupid stuff like that a receiver running the wrong way and my goodness guys their screen game has been wide open and the linemen have not been able to block those i kind of expect them to figure that out as well and that's the thing like for an nfl team once you clear up those stupid mistakes they're really not a bad team like we saw last week on thanksgiving i don't think that was a fluke because literally what's been holding them back this season has been turning a first and 10 into a first and 20 a third and short to a third and long as long as they're not doing those stupid mistakes they should be good to go and so we look at the snaps that we have here watson and dobbs those are operating as the one and two Jaden reed awesome to see him finally getting snaps again that i think that's part of the reason um he wasn't getting snaps early on the season is because he was making a lot of mental mistakes aj Dillon very interested how much work he's going to get because patrick taylor is back we saw him play 50 percent of the snaps and the reason being is because AJ Dillon is battling a groin injury as well so he is pretty banged up we could see Patrick Taylor a little bit more who all in all he's like a Jamal Williams light type of player where he's not great at anything but he's not bad at everything and also with Patrick Taylor he can play on special teams he's like a guy that's matting rating would be like a, a 60 but nothing would be bad glaringly bad and then Wicks if Wicks is out we're gonna see Malik Heath who's a pretty good player get probably about 20 percent of the work but we might just see a little bit more snaps go to Jaden Reed Wicks is someone that looks good um he is someone that really could develop into their best receiver honestly eventually and then Tucker Craft yeah I'm really a big fan of Tucker Craft guys to me he's a better pass catcher than Luke Musgrave and so if he's playing 96 percent of the snaps again that is highly appealing to me i want to get some props for tucker craft and so we look at the cheat sheet right now we're seeing aj Dillon for under receiving yards is one that's popping up on prize space i don't know i think this might make for a better over bet on underdog because he's gonna have to be involved in the passing game and part of my annoyance of being a packers fan this year i'm like if you just had an actual third down back i think we would probably have a couple more wins not even joke patrick taylor dropped a key third down pass in one of the games that shifted the game aj Dillon just hasn't been that great but oh no he he actually hasn't looked bad he has been doing his job very well where against detroit people are probably looking at the yards per carry no he did his job well picking up key first downs on third and short that is his role and then also he was actually pretty good in the passing game like he's not great he's not gonna have these big explosive plays but he's able to make them when they're there and the nice thing about it is jordan love has been looking his way and so that to me is a route for us to bet the over and if he does play more than 50% of the snaps, if he's more healthy than he was last week, he should be able to crush that over. And so that, I think, is a better bet on underdog. Actually, it's a better bet on the sports. Uh, Christian Watson, very much touchdown dependent, guys. We are going to see that if you want to bet the under, underdog is probably going to be the way to go. Now, he is a big play receiver. Um, I've mentioned probably so much the Christian Watson struggles that people are probably annoyed by it by now but all in all my job is to break down the slate and give you guys a proper education for the game so you guys can make the proper decisions now that's my job so can I go over it again with Christian Watson he really should have had a massive season thus far uh, when he's been healthy the reason that he hasn't is because well I, I think it's a confidence thing we saw that last year basically he's basically having the exact same season that he had like where uh, the start of the season probably should have had a more productive start um literally during the stretch he had like seven uh, maybe not seven but like four end zone targets and all of them arguably should have been caught he got his hands on them 
or was close to them. And then last week finally happened. And he didn't mess up. That's been the biggest thing. I think it's a confidence thing with him. So it wouldn't be shocking to see him have a massive game. Matchups a little bit more difficult. But all in all, if Matt LaFleur can scheme open some plays to him, I do think him and Love have a good chance to connect on, on one of those plays. To me, that's probably just a stay away. Uh, AJ Dillon fantasy score also something I think is just a stay away. Uh, again, if he does play more snaps and he does get some work in the passing game, I probably don't want to bet anything there. Jaden Reed receiving yards. Uh, I think this is a better bet on underdog to bet the over, but all in all, the unders being favored there. And then Tucker Craft. Yeah, guys, on underdog, again, I think that this is a better bet. 24.5 for receiving yards. That's a two yard difference. It just makes for a better bet on underdog because he is someone that I think I want to be going in on for this game. And the reason being, again, is he is much more of a pass catching tight end. Now, this stats are not going to show that too much he had one play i don't know if it's against the chargers or the lions i can't remember now that was almost a touchdown very athletic play um if he's just going to be playing that much it's tough to imagine him not having a better game than he had uh, against Detroit now don't get me wrong it's a t more difficult matchup there is a slight concern there but if anything there has been a lot of air yards a lot of production that has been lost to the tight end position because of like Luke Musgrave maybe <laughs> turning the wrong way uh on a pass from Jordan Love or just stumbling over his feet and I think with Tucker Craft there he's a little bit more I don't want to say athletic but a little bit better at tracking from there Jaden Reed over 3.5 receptions very interesting one like if he's going to be playing 60 to 70 percent snaps sure I like the over there I think that's a good bet. But part of my issue with him is that he's been getting a lot of rushing attempts lately, and they're not those little pop passes. And so we're not getting like cheap production out of him. So all in all, he probably will get four receptions in this game. Has looked good. They haven't getting the ball to him in short yard situations. But at the same time, maybe we see the production that Jane Reed's been getting in the short yardage situations that might actually go to Christian Watson just to mix it up because they have been using those two in similar ways. Then lastly, just kind of looking at Jordan Love for fantasy score. I do think that this is a pretty big edge that we're getting 14.5 for him. The average sports book line would have it set 16.5. Uh, if you guys don't like this bet, you can bet it on an underdog. But one of the strangest things this year is that Jordan Love has basically been a fantasy score prop lock the whole season. And it's weird. Like people, I don't know. I, I get that. That people don't watch film and whatnot but it's strange like even in the dfs or fantasy sports side like he has been crushing he's been extremely consistent like he's had one bad game and people act like he's been terrible i don't i don't it's so super strange guys um and looking at the prop line that we have he's only not gotten the over twice thus far this season and don't get me wrong it's a more difficult matchup the steelers the rams kind of more difficult matchups he didn't get it against the rams las vegas kind of a difficult matchup he did get the over there uh, but all in all this offense is looking better and if it's going to continue to look better i'm kind of fine by in the over fantasy score there for uh jordan love but that being said guys like yeah this is very much a slate in which we could do uh things both ways on the slate like pacheco for over fantasy score on underdog makes a lot of sense uh jordan love for under fantasy score makes a lot of sense on underdog hopefully we can get a middling opportunity i know some people in the comment section might be well this is confusing what do you mean bet them both ways it's just that's the nature of the beast right like we're just trying to gain the best uh percentage edges that we can have that's going to lead us to success in the long term that's what i'm trying to go with here so again guys right now we have some big prop line differences com uh, when we compare both sites uh Mahomes three yard difference and so I've I've been in the lower here at 19.5 and then been in the over at 16.5 on on prize picks uh Pacheco I don't really have a good read on this honestly I I feel like uh the reason why there's a big discrepancy is probably the PPR Price pick seems to be overvaluing the PPR aspect, whereas underdog might be undervaluing the PPR aspect a little bit. That is a 0.5 difference, just as an FYI. Underdog is 0 0.5 for PPR. Price picks is a full point PPR. That could very well be the case, but all in all, we are getting a mathematical edge there, so we'll take it. And then Jordan Love here as well. Uh, for quarterback scoring, it is basically the exact same thing. I think fumbles lost is the only difference uh, between the sites where it's a slightly different calculation. All in all, that's not something that ever really goes into the projection data too much for quarterbacks. It is something that can happen, but it's never really likely to happen. So all in all, I do think the better bet would be over 14.5 on prize picks, but all in all, we're getting a pretty big edge here on both sides. And then again, looking at on the flip side of it, guys, like this is what I mean. Like this shouldn't be that big of a difference for like Isaiah Pacheco. It just shouldn't. He's not going to get, I mean, he could obviously, but the projection data that we're pulling is not going to say six receptions or whatever the the difference would make up for that so very much it seems like one of the prize picks is probably saying he's going to score a touchdown where underdogs are really not valuing him for a touchdown uh and then again this is a big edge right now another pretty big edge right now like that is a big difference and all in all 
I kind of expect Jordan Love to have the consistent quarterback play that he's had thus far this season. The consistent quarterback play that I really predicted when I was begging you guys to draft him at the end of your best ball drafts. And all in all, I do worry. It is a primetime game. You look at their uh, other two games that have been primetime games, probably their worst games that they played. So that is a concern. The Thanksgiving game wasn't a nighttime game. It was kind of in primetime though, but maybe they just struggle at night. Maybe this is the Kirk Cousins stuff. And I would explain that more on Matt LaFleur, uh, just having, I don't know, bad game plan. And that's the biggest takeaway is the last two games, really last three games matt lafleur has been clutch with his game plan and then looking at it young hoku is currently the best prop bet right now guys i know it's a noon game a lot of you guys probably won't see that i don't like to do three slip bets on prize picks simply because uh you're basically use, losing a unit on prize picks compared to underdog and so that's that's the biggest difference but that is going to be all for this video uh make sure to give a like and subscribe to this channel uh if you guys want access to the 95 sports underdog and prize cheat sheet is available at 95sports.com for just $10 a month. Thank you guys for watching. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.